but they were mightily used of God during that time. Missions just spread out, and then the Great Awakening Revival preaching spread out. So I would encourage you to read these stories. That way it can put you under conviction when you're working in a ministry. Smallness, they understood that. People not listening, they understood that. And they suffered immense persecution. Okay, let's keep reading. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. So God says that because they kept his word of patience, God's going to keep them away from what he calls hour of temptation. So for some reason, there is some sort of hour of temptation. In one way, Philadelphia would be able to avoid whatever this hour of temptation is. Notice it says this hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. So there is some kind of temptation, some kind of trial that's going to afflict the whole world. So that one is referring to the tribulation then. to try them that dwell upon the earth. So God, this tribulation is to try them, test them. The word tribulation, temptation, and trying, they all are simultaneous throughout your Bible if you read that. So there's no doubt that this is referring to a tribulation timeline. So then a spiritual application, remember double application? Spiritual application for the church could mean this. It could mean that the church of Philadelphia because they were such a golden age that time, there's no way the tribulation can happen with, with the one world government, right? Why? Because there's no way the Antichrist is going to take over the world with all these people preaching hellfire and brimstone, people getting saved and right with God. So that just delayed the tribulation timeline. So because of that, the Lord delivered them from this hour of that time. It could also be referring to that if the, because these people are faithful, that there is some sort of pre-tribulation escape, so to speak. So some people refer to this as the pre-tribulation rapture. Now, you can use that if you want to, but to be quite honest, it's not a really strong argument for a pre-tribulation rapture. That's what I don't think, because it's talking about if you're patient for God, then you don't have to go through the tribulation. That's not true. If you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Anyone who is saved in Jesus Christ, whether you're faithful or not, you get raptured. Amen. You get raptured. It doesn't change that fact. Now, the doctrinal application, <coughs> excuse me, the doctrinal application for this could be that because these tribulation saints of this Philadelphia region were found faithful and they were patient, that they could be raptured before God actually spreads out his seven vials that judges the whole world. So that could also be another explanation, which is very true. There is a rapture that is conditional. Now, we read that before, so I'm not going to do it again. But Matthew chapter 25, if you read the first verses of Matthew chapter 25, there were five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. So notice that these particular tribulation saints that were wise, like Philadelphia, because they were patient, they were faithful, they were delivered from the hour of temptation before God was going to uh, pour out his vials that judges the whole world. So God delivered them up. They were raptured. They escaped. But five of them were left behind. They were called the five foolish virgins. So that could be the doctrinal application concerning the book of Revelation about this Philadelphian church. All right, now let's look at verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Now that's a verse that you want to mark down. That's a great verse proving the imminent return of Jesus Christ, that it's really soon. Jesus, when he comes for us and raptures us, so here's our rapture, right? Laodicea. And right before the tribulation, we go up. That's the pre-tribulation rapture right here for Christians. Remember, there's a pre-tribulation rapture for Christians, 
and then there's a tribulation rapture for tribulation saints. I'm not going to expound that again. Now, because of this pre-tribulation rapture, the Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. So Jesus is coming really soon. We're expecting this any moment. Amen. We're seeing the signs of the times. That's why we're getting ready right now. Now, remember, I told you before, some people say, well, this, how, uh, Jesus is coming is not soon enough, right? Jesus said that it's soon. But to be quite honest, it's been, what, 2,000 years right here, right? The entire church age era right here has been 2,000 years. With 2,000 years of the church age at this time, how can you honestly say that the rapture is really soon? Remember, I showed you 2 Peter chapter 3. A day with the Lord is 1,000 years, as 1,000 years is one day. Because to God's uh, eyes, it, uh, it is very soon to Him. you got to realize this. He lived eternally. There was no beginning. See, so 2,000 years is just a blink of an eye to Him. That's why it's very interesting when you study the Bible about some kind of rapture or resurrection or God restoring the kingdom. He always talks about two days, two days, two days. And a thousand years is one day, 2 Peter chapter 3. So how long has it been? 2,000 years. It's really soon. It's any moment now. We're right at, there's no doubt, we're right at the corner. Okay, let's keep reading. Hold that fast which thou hast. So whatever you're doing for the Lord, you got to hold fast to what you have right now. You might say, why is that? Because it says right here that no man take thy crown. So whatever you're holding on to right now while you're serving God, you better hold on to that because you're, you can lose your crown. If you don't hold fast to your faithful service to the Lord, you can lose rewards. You might say, what? It's possible I can lose rewards? Absolutely. The verse is right here, that no man take thy crown. Now, Revelation chapter 3 is the chapter that you want to mark down about losing stuff. That is the chapter. Because we covered it last time right here in Revelation chapter 3. You we talked about crowns, right? When we talked about the church of Sardis, it was concerning their garments, right? And then if you look at Laodicea, which we're going to cover soon at verse 18, it's going to be their riches, including their garments. So at the judgment seat of Christ, we see several things right here. The judgment seat of Christ. There are several things you can lose that you want to hold on to. One is your rewards. So gold, silver, precious stones. The other one is your clothes. We talked about that one, your white garments. The other one is referring to, as we saw it right here in this passage, your crown. You can lose your crown. Now, I'm going to give you two more bonuses right here. The other one is referring to the cities, rulership of cities. You find that at the book of Luke. We're not going to turn there, but look at the book of Luke. It talks about God giving certain pounds to a certain servant and how well they use the pound let's say five pounds and they get five cities to rule they're given ten pounds to take care of it well they're given ten cities to rule but as you continue reading that parable God mentions take away the pound from this servant who didn't serve me well and give it to this other servant so notice right here people can steal your crown people can steal your city and not only that it's your inheritance. Inheritance would be proven at Revelation chapter 21 as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The Bible says that you will inherit all things, Revelation 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 mentions what all things are, whether they be of earth, heaven, past, present, future, all are yours. So that's literally everything in the universe. So it's so sad how many people are working for something very small, for a small right. property of land That's here right. at Silicon right. Valley, and they lose all of this. Amen. See, this is something you don't want to lose. Oh, I got a fancy car. So what? I can have 10 more fancy cars with 20 different chariots. Amen. So you see right here, you got to realize you can't lose all of this because all are yours, the Bible says, when we talk about inheritance.
First Corinthians chapter 3 says that. Revelation chapter 21. So, if you don't hold fast what you hold on to, what can happen is if Sean doesn't hold fast to what he has on to, Brother Max can be tall enough to grab that crown away from him. Help him. Yeah, help him lower. Exactly. If I'm not careful, I might lose my crown my, as well. Help him and if it's to one of you, that's going to be totally bad. <laughs> but you see right here, the point is this. You're going to imagine this, that you are butt naked. You have nothing to have, nothing to own for a thousand years at the millennium. And then you see one of these Christians who has a really, a really nice crown, full clothed garment and everything really neat. And you're like, man, I wish I can have some of that. And the guy looked at you and said, well, this city I'm ruling, at, ruling and this crown that I'm wearing is yours. Oh, man. Oh. And you're going to be seeing that for a thousand years long. Why would God do that? You notice right here, everything God's doing is deliberately regret and shame to you. That's why you're naked. Why? Because of shame, guilt. That's why God has somebody else wearing your crown. Why? Because of regret, so you can see it. The purpose of the judgment seat of Christ is truly to give you shame, regret on what you could have done to serve God. So if I were you, I wouldn't say, oh, this ain't a big deal. No, it's going to be a big deal. 1,000 years long, you, you can have that over your conscience. You think you're going to really enjoy the millennium? 